okay hello everyone in this class we will going to discuss regarding the formation of steam and its properties so generally we know that steam is a vapor of water it is widely used in different process industries like chemical industries sugar mills etc and also it is used in power generation in power plants it is used in power generation in power plants like we will go with steam turbines steam power plants nuclear power plants to generate the electricity okay so apart from that in this topic we will going to discuss one more very important uh, topic called the formation of steam at constant pressure so very very important as per your exam point of view the formation of steam at the constant pressure so as we all know that the formation of steam takes place the formation of steam takes place when water heated continuously when water heated continuously uh, the figure shows that steam generation process this figure shows that steam generation process by heating the water from 0 degree celsius to the 0 degree celsius at constant pressure 0 degree celsius at constant pr pressure for example consider a cylinder consider a cylinder fitted with a piston fitted with a piston which moves freely which moves freely in it so 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius it means highs for example if you observe that figure a so 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius highs is taken into the cylinder and the piston is loaded with a weight w okay so this is a weight w uh, to maintain the constant pressure to maintain the constant pressure in the figure so when the heated when heated the temperature rises so when we will produce some sort of when we heat this okay so automatically it rises temperature and it's continuous until the boiling point reached until the boiling point is reached then then the temperature at which the water starts boiling the temperature at which the water start boiling is called as the boiling temperature or also called as saturation temperature boiling temperature or also called as saturation temperature next the volume of water also increases it means that vf okay if you observe that this figure b the volume of water also increases to vf as shown in figure okay so b as well as c so if this process heated if this process heating is continuous further the water brings into the brings into change in its phase as shown in figure c okay you can see this is a figure b in volume should be increases volume of water increases so automatically so further heated so in if you observe this figure c so here the face of this okay the, it, it water begins to change its face and okay so it will become into a wet steam so wet steam formation takes place wet steam formation takes place so further okay so when wet steam is which contains both water as well as the vapors both water as well as vapor if you observe here okay in the figure c so further addition of the heat absorb all the water particles absorb all the water particle present in it and convert it into okay, convert wet steam into a dry steam convert wet steam into a dry steam as shown in this figure d as shown in this figure d so if the dry steam is further heated if the dry steam is further heated at constant pressure so its temperature and volume increases its temperature and volume increases as shown in figure d so then the steam obtained as a superheated steam which is denoted by tsup at degree celsius okay so the superheated steam is behave as a perfect gas so this is the steam formation process with the example of cylinder piston arrangement with the help of cylinder piston arrangement next with the help of ts diagram we will going to discuss the formation of steam with the help of ts diagram uh, temperature enthalpy diagram so with respect to this if you observe here so at point a 
the point a represents 1 kg of water at 0 degree celsius which is taken place in closed cylinder which is taken place in closed cylinder when it is heated at constant pressure when it is at heated at constant pressure so temperature rises until it reaches boiling state at point b so this is the boiling state it means the saturation temperature so the boiling point is shown in the shown on the graph at b so which is at saturation temperature ts at degree celsius saturation temperature is denoted by t sub x s at degree celsius okay so next the amount of heat the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water from 0 degree celsius to saturated water is known as a sensible heat amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water from 0 degree celsius to saturation water is known as the sensible heat if you observe here so amount of heat required to convert at point a to point b so this is called as the sensible heat so then the, between b and c so this is a saturation line so between c b and c the steam is in wet condition okay in the form of wet the steam is in the form of wet so next so further so further addition of the heat the further addition of the heat will cause change in phase will cause change in phase the point c represented dry steam okay so this point c is represented in this uh, enthalpy is a temperature enthalpy diagram ts diagram is completely as a dry steam where there will be no water particles present in the steam okay no water particle present in the steam the amount of heat the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of saturated water 1 kg of saturated water to the dry steam at a saturation temperature is known as a latent heat which is denoted by hfg which is denoted by hfg okay so the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water to dry dry steam at a saturation temperature is known as a latent heat okay so next we have so the dry steam so if dry steam is dry steam if heated further the temperature rises and and this state is shown by the point d this state is shown by the point d which is superheated steam which is superheated steam so which is denoted by t sup at degree celsius and the steam is known as superheated steam the steam is known as superheated steam so the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of dry steam to the superheated steam is known as amount of superheat or it's known as degree of superheat degree of superheat okay so where hf is nothing but a where hf is nothing but a sensible heat hfg is nothing but a latent heat and hg is nothing but a the amount of which it, it is the total amount of heat absorbed so it is nothing but a 1 kg of water to convert 1 kg of water from 0 degree celsius to the dry steam so that is nothing but h hg is equal to hf plus hfg hf plus hfg so and h sup is equal to enthalpy of superheated steam enthalpy of superheated steam so so this is about so this is about uh this is about uh the steam formation process steam formation process at constant pressure the formation of steam at a constant pressure with the help of ts diagram okay so just will once again just glance here so the steam is a okay steam is a vapor of water it is very widely used in different process industries like chemical industries sugar mills etc and also it is used in power generation in power plants like most of the nuclear power plants will use uh, steam generators so next we have the formation of steam at constant pressure the formation of steam is takes place when the water is heated continuously so heated as shown in this figure so the steam generation process by heating the water from 0 degree celsius at 
constant pressure. This is the so we have the piston cylinder arrangement. So it is a formation of steam at constant pressure. So the steam, the formation of steam at TS diagram with the help of TS diagram. So at point A clearly represents that one kg of water at zero degree Celsius. So which is takes place in closer cylinder. So here, so at constant pressure. So when the when it is heat, heated at constant pressure, the temperature rises until it's reaching reaches boiling point. At okay, this we will call it as a saturation temperature. The boiling point is shown on the graph at B. So which is at saturation temperature denoted by Ts at degree Celsius. So here very three important definitions they will ask you in the examination. Those are the amount of heat required to convert one kg of water from 0 degree Celsius to the saturation water is known as sensible heat. Next, we have one more very important definition. Amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of saturated water to the dry steam at saturation temperature is known as latent heat. Amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of dry steam to the superheated steam is known as amount of superheat or degree of superheat. So, this is about the formation of steam at constant pressure with the help of TS diagram.